Hey kids, you are about to listen to a comedy podcast. That means that none of this is medical advice. If you need medical advice or medical care, please contact your doctor. Welcome to the Jock Doc Show featuring Mr. Cameron. Introducing your host, Mr. Cameron. How's everyone doing? Chalk dot, chalk dot, chalk dot. Yes, my beautiful audience. Chalk dot, chalk dot, chalk dot. Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome to another episode of the new and improved Jock Doc Show. <laughs> thank you, thank you, children. All right, now everyone here knows what the deal is. We're a medical podcast, but we're a cool medical podcast. We're a podcast turn a TV show. We're a TV show turn an entertainment empire, and we are going further than we've ever gone before. Isn't that right, everyone? <gasps> That's right. And we have a special guest here with us today to help us launch a new era for Jock Doc. You know him. You already love him. It's a blast from the past. It's sort of a reunion, you might say. It's the one and only original host of Jock Doc, Dr. London. Come on out here, Dr. London. <laughs> Come on, come on, come on, guys. Give it up for Dr. London. Come on. Okay. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Cameron. This is kind of a different introduction than I'm used to. Um, oh, why is that, Dr. London? Are, are you, you're used to, you're doing your old ways of things? Well, ju- just it's my show. and This is weird, though. Oh, what? Well, I mean, you know my name is on it, right? <laughs> Okay, okay, calm down, calm down, calm down. Dr. London, uh, surely you're aware of the circumstances. You, as we all know, you uh, have been sick for the last few weeks. And so I was in charge of uh, taking over Jock Doc. Yes. And so we've started a new era of Jock Doc. Well, so I was, I was taking a You're the past nap. host, and now I'm the new host. Thank you, thank you. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. Okay, well, aside from the fact that, you know, I, I didn't really sign on to this, why do you have... So this is a podcast, but you have a lot of cameras here. It's a podcast. It's a TV show. It's a media empire. So it doesn't look like the cameras are plugged in, but you do have cameramen behind them? I don't know what those things are, and I don't know who those people are, but they're here, and I'm paying them. Okay. Isn't that right, everyone? (laughs) That's right. Now, Dr. London, I want to talk to you. It's been so long. I know uh, you're probably, it's probably weird for you being back on the set of your old show, but what have you been up to? How have things been since you've retired? Okay, I guess I should clarify. I've been working more. Like, I haven't retired. I guess maybe because I haven't been able to come into the studio as much, you've thought that it's retirement. But that's just... No, so I've been, I've been isolating a lot. You're saying you're spending your retirement working. That's fine. That's great. Great answer, Dr. London. Everyone just cheer for Dr. London. Okay. <laughs> There we go. There it is. Dr. London. Now, I mean, have you gone on vacation or anything? Have you have you have you gotten to travel like you always wanted to? I mean, you're retired for God's sakes. Well, so no, I'm not. So this is there's I'm not sure if you're aware, but there's actually a, a pandemic currently. So that's really been where my focus has been. Oh, boo, we don't like to hear that word, pandemic. That's a negative word. We don't bring negative words. Okay, everyone. I Okay, everyone. We don't bring negative words into positive spaces. And this is a positive space. Uh, okay. So I guess if you're running the, the show today, so you have the, the cameraman there. It looks like you have a stage manager. What? That's right. Cynthia. 
Yeah. Hi, Cynthia. So, um, why? She's booing you from the sides, but you, Cynthia, you don't have to do that. Okay, sorry. I just, yeah. I just don't have to do Sure. Okay. So, what did you have planned? I assume you're still going to. Like, do you have a medical lesson? Because that's really the point of this. Is it's a medical education podcast. Well, I think that portion of the show, we're going to call that the uh, alpha portion, right? Like, it's, a, it's, an, it's like a program that's in alpha. Now we have moved on to production. And so we're going to leave some of that stuff from the previous version behind. So the stuff that everyone hated, the stuff that people found annoying, the stuff that people, frankly, a lot of our listeners, I, I've read a lot of suicide notes that make that they time stamp where they were in the podcast when they finally pulled the trigger. And it's almost always during the medical portion. That's what pushed them over the edge. Oh, wow. And so I think for the safety of our audience, we have to be considerate of our audience. But Dr. Lennon, I guess, you know what? For old time's sake, I'm so glad that you're here. And now, you know, everyone's been wondering what you've been up to and ever since you've been gone and everything. And so as a gift to you, I would love to hear a medical lesson. Okay. So the medical lesson that I had planned for this week, and I was I was still going to do it on the, the regular show. Um, is mitral stenosis. So mitral stenosis is a scarring and a narrowing of the mitral valve orifice, uh, typically due to rheumatic heart disease. In rheumatic heart disease, immune-mediated damage to the mitral valve caused by cross-reactivity between the streptococcal antigen and the valve tissue leads to the aforementioned scarring and narrowing of the mitral valve orifice. Uh, Dr. London, Dr. London, can we stop for a second? You are, I mean, you are... Speeding through this. Are you nervous? Is it the audience? Is it the show? Is it that, you know, obviously people are going to be comparing your hosting abilities to my hosting abilities and you're not going to be able to compete? Or what? I mean, what's going on, man? Well, part, Let's talk this through. So part of it is that, you know, we're supposed to be isolating and I see you have a studio audience gathered here. So I wanted to kind of. That is right. I wanted to wrap things up as fast as I could because that doesn't seem appropriate or you know like I, it seems like this should be s- shut down right now actually you dr lennon you it's because you don't know all the details okay everyone here in this audience has been extremely extremely careful over the last few weeks because they have careful. autoimmune issues so they okay autoimmune issues so they're more at risk to develop the disease. Right, but they've been extra careful from the beginning. And now we've got them all in here as opposed to out in the world and out at, like shopping at Target or whatever. We've got them all in one building to keep them safe. And I think everyone is having a great time and everyone is having the time of their life on the Jock Doc show. <laughs> That's right. So the main issue is that, for one thing, Cameron, I don't know how careful you've been. I've been around, you know, some potentially, uh, you know, contaminated patients. So I'm, it's better if we keep our distance and better if everyone remain isolated. Do you understand how that's Yeah, the and need? just to clarify, you, you said you didn't know how careful I'm being. I'm not being careful at all. I'm kind of taking the attitude of it either doesn't exist or if it does exist, I want it really badly because i kind of feel left out if i don't get it okay well let me go on with the medical lesson and once again i'll just try to be brief as as brief as i can be with such a sort of heavy topic uh so Uh mitral stenosis results in elevated left atrial pressure or pressure in the upper left chamber of the heart and a uh, lung venous pressure. God, this backup of blood the ratings, to the, the lungs are plummeting as you speak. Leads to pulmonary congestion. God. Long-standing mitral con- stenosis can result in pulmonary hypertension 2.1. and ultimately can result in right ventricular failure. 1.7. Long-standing mitral stenosis can also lead to atrial fibrillation due to in- increased 1. left 3. atrial size and pressure. 
So clinically, mitral stenosis can present with exertional shortness of breath, difficulty breathing while lying down, and paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea, which is an attack of severe shortness of breath and coughing that typically wakes a person up from sleep. Uh, patients may also have palpitations, chest pain, and coughing up blood. Uh, thromboembolism associated with the atrial fibrillation can also At occur. Sydney Santa on Twitter has written, The more Dr. London speaks, the harder I push the knife into my arm. <laughs> as some swelling and edema knows, known as ascites, um, if, if right heart failure occurs, and that's the right lower heart chamber. So those are the symptoms. But the things that a physician can objectively measure, referred to as signs, are as follows. So you can have mitral stenosis, uh, heart murmur, which can... Another tweet from Dwayne the Jock Doc Fan. He says, the more Dr. London speaks, the more I refuse to speak ever again. Because if this is what human voice sounds like, then I don't want anyone to suffer through that. Oh. Okay, so that's a huge fan of ours. His screen name is Dwayne the Jock Doc fan. Okay, I, I realize that, but we really have to. Okay, so mitral stenosis, um, heart murmur, which consists of an opening snap followed by a low pitched diastolic rumble and pre systolic accentuation. Um, with, with long standing disease, there may also be signs of right ventricular failure, such as enlarged neck veins, enlarged liver, swelling, and or uh, pulmonary hypertension. Um, all signs and symptoms will increase with exercise and during pregnancy. So diagnosis will typically pre- uh, begin with an x-ray, and that would show maybe left atrial enlargement early on. And we are down to zero listeners. We're zero listeners now. Echocardiogram is the most important test in confirming the diagnosis and will show left atrial enlargement, a thick calcified mitral valve, a narrow fish mouth shaped orifice, and signs of right ventricular fibrillation. Narrow fish mouth shaped orifice. I haven't been listening to anything you've been saying, but I did hear that. Okay, so treatment includes diuretics for pulmonary congestion and edema, beta blockers to decrease heart rate and cardiac output. Um, if atrial fibrillation is present, that should be treated accordingly, but that's its own topic. Uh, for severe disease, percutaneous balloon valvuloplasty usually produces excellent results. Balloon, plasty. And as for other options, valvotomy is contraindicated. Open commissurotomy and mitral valve replacement are other options. So, for our listeners, I'm sorry if if that's if that was difficult for some of you to. It's yeah, it was very very difficult. And Doctor London, again, it feels like you're wearing sort of a mask, and not the mask that you should be wearing in this day and age. I'm talking about you're putting up a front, and you're using this medical knowledge and your your medical know how to not be the real you. You're hiding behind these lessons about fish mouth balloons and beta blockers. Wow. Okay, I guess this does go Let's, into... This is... The Jock Talk Show, the new and improved Jock Talk Show, we don't just get into the hard facts, but we also get into the hard facts of your heart. And that's what we're going to do here today, Dr. London. What is wrong with you? Okay. So you have been going on about this for a while, the um what you call the rise of vigilantism in medicine and the the rest of the world just because people are wearing mask masks doesn't mean that they're trying to be vigilante superheroes mm, yes they are one two your mask is medicine three that means you're trying to be a superhero okay and so uh, there is sort of a professional aspect to the, the I guess, I, and to some extent you might argue that I have a medical persona because there's a professional element to it. But, you know, we all have our professional elements that we put on whenever we go to our... Right, and you keep saying all of this, all these sentences, and none of them are addressing the question, which is, what is wrong with you? Let's dig into this, Dr. London. This is your one opportunity in front of our, our hardcore, dedicated fans, the people who are still listening Which you s- after they turned the podcast slash show slash in- enterprise back on okay. when they figured you were probably done with your lesson. Okay. It's time for you to be the real you and let the audience in a little bit. 
instead of hiding. Let's talk about it. Dr. London, who are you? Okay, I'm a person. Really? That's the... Yeah. Uh, calm down. Yeah, calm down, everyone. That's the... When, that, when someone asks, who are you? Your response is, I'm a person? That's weird. I'm just not really sure what you're looking for here. Just who are you? You could answer in any way. Okay, Dr. London Smith. In every other way would be better than a person. Okay, I, I'm not you're, a vigilante. Okay, that's fine. Who... God, I did not realize this was going to be so difficult just to get you to say just normal person things. Okay. So, you know, what was your childhood like? Is that is that a little more direct or something? Where are you from? So for my childhood, I, um, I think I had a pretty nice, normal childhood. I mean, I was a child okay. actor, so that was something... Okay, so this is something we've never talked about on the show ever. Yeah, it just that doesn't could seem be relevant. interesting. You're a child actor, so what was that like? Did you, did you take any of your acting experience into your medical profession? Yeah, well, um, just being clear spoken, uh, you know, preparing properly, public speaking, all of that sort of thing. Uh, God, this is just. This is just the worst interview that's ever... I am so sorry, everyone. Well, I know I everyone didn't... here drove a long way. People flew in from the other side of the country. Why? I'm so, so sorry. This is... Am I the only one you're interviewing today? Uh, uh, guys, again, I am so, so sorry. Okay, well, if there's... Do you have a guest planned or anything? Yeah, I've got... Just, just, just give the audience something. Can you just give the audience, like, a secret? Do you have a secret that you can give? Uh... Okay, so last weekend, I tried to do one of those virtual dates. Okay, and how did that go? The way it's supposed to work, I think, is that their screen will show their face, and then your screen, like, like your cameras will both be activated so that you can talk to each other. Right. Yeah, so mine, I could see my face, but their camera was turned off, and then they kept sort of asking me for information. Like, uh, like what kind of information? Oh, it was, it was just general date stuff, I guess. Like, it was like, you know, where do you live? And I was like, the Dallas area. No matter what I said, they were surprised and really interested. Mm-hmm. And they were like, oh, wow, tell me more. And it, it seemed like every question narrowed down a lot of specifics. It was asking mother's maiden name. What was your childhood first pet? Okay, so you've done some of these dating things too then. Oh, yeah, it's completely normal. Okay, because, yeah, they kept, they got, you know, like, oh, what's your address? I want to, you know, mail you a chocolate or something. And I'm like, oh, oh, cool. Uh, I guess I'll ask for theirs, too. What's your mother's maiden name? Because uh, if I ever run into her, I want to say I know her maiden name. And it's like, okay, that makes sense. So, of course, you're going to give that to Yeah. Them. Well, and it it's one of those things where, like, uh, it's come up for me before, like my mom, like me remembering her maiden name has come in handy. So I'm guessing that someone else running into her, maybe the same thing could happen. So uh, anyway, it was the date. Uh, it, I guess it went so well. What the, I guess let's, that's great. What's the secret part of this date? I get, well, it was just the date went so well. Once again, I felt like I did a lot of the talking, which I guess what? is... And that's the secret part is that the date went well. Yeah, I normally don't talk about the ones that go so well. Well, first of all, you've never had a date go well. So the one. What? Two. I, that's not a secret. That's just a. That's just like a fact. Okay, I get the fact that the date went well. No, it's just like a thing you did last night. Yeah, I guess just not a lot of people know it, which makes it a secret to me, and I haven't shared it. No, that's not a secret. Just because you haven't shared something yet does not make it a secret. I have not shared that this morning I ate 74 bowls of Frosted Flakes, but not the kind you're thinking of. But that doesn't make it a secret. I just haven't told anyone that. Yeah, I guess I don't really follow, but we can, 
let's maybe move on from there. I I really we should get to these other guests of yours. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This is my show, and we follow where I lead. Now, my what is there to not to get? Just because you haven't shared something yet doesn't mean it's a secret. Okay, I guess I don't have a secret for you then. Is you don't. <sighs> You can't give our audience one damn thing, just something juicy. I did. My personal life. You you said that you went on a date and you told someone your social security number. I didn't. Wait. How do you know that I said that? Uh, Ooh. um, Because the that I that's actually one of the top 10 date questions. Huh. Okay. So. Maybe I should get a hold of these top 10 date questions. That sounds useful. Yeah, it's just on, um, it's just in an email that you'll get from me. Okay. That's where you'll find them. Huh, okay, well, I don't, uh, so, so the top 10 dating tips from you. Yeah, it's not like a website you can access. It's an email that you will be receiving from me, which is the top 10 date tips. That's where I found all this information. But uh, never mind. So Dr. London, he doesn't have a secret, which you know what that means. If someone doesn't have a secret, it probably means they're a murderer or some sort of a kidnapper. So let's move on to our next guest. Yeah, or to any guest, because I'm the host of a podcast, so it doesn't really make you sense. Are, you are, are, can you stick around, Dr. London, for the rest of the show? Yeah, no, that's, that's my role in the show, is I'm the host we have today a very, very special guest. One of the most special guests that we've ever had. This is a guest that you might recognize if you're an old school fan. But if you're a new school f- friend, then you might not know him. But you'll know him now. Please welcome to the show, Sage Daniels. Give it up for Sage Daniels, everyone. Hi. Hi. What is he doing here? Well, I'm I'm the host. You said that he wasn't on the show any you said that he wasn't the host anymore. He's not the host anymore. He is now just some sort of a freak that we keep around. Well, do not get close to me, okay? I've got my apple rosary on today. That means you cannot get near me. Okay. I think the the goal my goal right now is to convert Dr. London's role into more of a Guillermo on Jimmy Kimmel kind of position. So, I don't know who that is. He's like kind of the doorman or something. Okay, so Sage. I do want to bring up that you said that uh, it's Sage. I'm actually Governor Sage Daniels now. Wow, you don't say. Mm -hmm. That was a left official. Well, let's catch the listeners up first of all. So. So Sage, you catch the listeners up on you trying to take control of my show. Well, just I bring you on it just as a good gesture of friendship. I just want to, and you're instantly like, let's just catch this up. But yeah, go ahead, catch everyone up. Yeah. So Miss Daniels here was on the podcast on our first episode actually, and uh, she came on a few days after she had had a child, and let's see, she was running for. A corner office at the time. She was trying to sell her essential, or her, sorry, her spiritual oils. I'm actually co-founder of a life-changing uh, medication, really uh, called Spiritual Oils. That was kind of the base level where I started this journey, and a lot's happened along the way. Mostly, what I'm excited about is <clears throat> something that's necessary for this time. I've begun to offer aura cleanses. Interesting. And so I go in and I have to spend a lot of time really staring deeply into your eyes. I try to get as close as I possibly can to see every part of your eye. As you can see, I'm doing that now to Cameron. I'm looking deeply, deeply into your eyes. Now, what what, what kind of cleanse is this the aura version of? You know, there's all sorts of like normal cleanses. You've got your just like uh, your like o- only fruit and water type cleanses, and then you've got the ones where you try to like eliminate all sugars and everything like that. What is the, what, what? What are we doing right now? So this is kind of like I don't know if you've ever heard of this thing called psyllium husk, 
but you drink the psyllium husk and it expands in your colon mm-hmm. and it goes into all the little nooks and the little crannies of your colon mm-hmm. and it pulls out all of the food that's left over. And so this is kind of the like sort of, the spiritual version of the that. Sort of, this is sort of the spiritual version of, of digging out poop particles. Exactly. And that's what we need in this time more than ever. Flushing out fart dust. Thank you, DJ Dylan. So as you can see, I'm looking deep into your aura and I'm seeing that there is a blockage. Cameron, have you recently had a devil's food cake? Mm, mm, uh, yeah. yeah? Possibly. Get out! All right. Did you just remove the devil's from the devil's food cake in my body? You might need to uh, just relax. Okay. Because I have uh, removed the cake as well. And so that's going to be passing pretty soon. And so you're just going to want to sit very still because it can be painful. So what, just relax. Which, where is this pain? Where is it going to be painful? Going to be painful in the fish mouth orifice. Okay. The fish mouth orifice. You say this as if that's a part of your digestive tract. The... The part I was referring to the medical lesson is in your heart. That's the end of the digestive tract. Oh. Like the so butthole. no, it isn't. It's actually, that's in your heart. That's the mitral valve. Get away from me. Get away from me. Dr. London, respect our guests. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, my guest, because you're not the host anymore. It's my show. Mine. Me. Yes, it's Dr. Cameron's show thank you finally someone gets it now sage i want you to look in dr london's eyes and i want you to tell just in the same way that you've helped clear my aura and i just feel so much lighter right now i feel so much better my feet aren't doing the like shaky thing anymore my thumb is still black and blue but if i do this if i pull it all the all the way it hurts a lot and I think that's good. So you've, I mean, I've seen the effects that you've had on my body. Can we, can we do the same thing with Dr. London? I'll try, but is his the aura closer just that I get, screwed oh, up. the stench, the stench. Oh. I don't think I could get any closer because of the stench and the burning sensation that I'm feeling. Okay, what, what, what is the stench that you're smelling on Dr. London? Because I'm getting a sort of like a... Cologne? Yeah, but it's like a the cologne that like a like a like a like a loser would have. Like, well, it's French. I don't know if that's. I'm just really, sm- just the smell of the curve. Uh, uh, is that what you're wearing? No. Curve. C- kind of close, I guess. Chrome. That's a good professor, Doctor London. That's it's okay, guys. It's okay, everyone. Dr. Lennon, can you fix your smell real quick so we can continue the show? Pause the cameras. Okay, well, the cameras are not turned on. Which, again, I don't know what those things are. I don't know who those people are. I'm just paying them, baby. So, actually, what I'd like to do now, I really am tired of acknowledging Dr. London. I just... His smell, his aura, the burning sensation that's coming off of him. I'm just, I'm getting done Where is with it burning it. you? Just any time I get near him, it's like the whole front of my body starts to burn. Oh, it's like standing too close to like an IHOP that you set on fire. Yes. I feel that. I just can't do it anymore. So what I'd like to, I'd like to uh, kind of do something a little different. I'm going to do a live I know I did a aura reading on mm-hmm. you, Cameron, but we kind of know each other. We have a rapport. I'd like to demonstrate on someone that I've... Well, yeah, I'm, I'm your number one customer, yeah. I'd like to demonstrate on someone that I've never met or seen before. So, Cynthia, can you bring over this uh, person that you brought off of the street? Thank you, Cynthia. Thank you, thank you. All right, uh, young lady, uh, what is this? What, uh, what is your name? Hello, my name is Betty. Bless you. Uh, today I'm going to do, if you don't mind, I'd like to do an mind. aura reading. I don't mind at all. Oh, I'm I'm sorry. I'm asking Betty if she oh, oh, if I do an aura yeah, reading no, oh, on her. I just, uh, I just, no one was talking to me for a while, so I just thought maybe I kind of got lonely. But go ahead. 
Betty, have you, uh, I'm just kind of, right now, I, I'm getting very close, as you can see, but I'm really looking deep into your eyes, and I'm trying to figure out what the blockage is in your life. Uh, have you uh, recently watched that 70s show? I watched it right before this. <gasps> Get out! Oh my god. She's... She's... Looking the same as before. But how do you feel, Betty? I've been doing a lot of Yoda. So I feel good. Wow. Good! Oh my gosh. Everyone give a hand for what we've just seen today. And like I said, I've never met this person before yes, in my life. Thank she's you. not my daughter. She's not your daughter? I just want to clarify, this is not my daughter. Nope. Go ahead, Betty, de- dear. I, I mean, I mean uh, Betty. More about how I'm feeling? Actually, can I ask Betty a question real quick? Please. Betty, are you Sage's daughter? I am not Sage's daughter. Nope. Okay. I will take that to the grave. Moving on. Um, so, how do you feel, Betty? Tell us. Tell us, really. Mm, I feel relaxed. I feel trapped. You feel trapped? In what way? Emotionally. Uh, My Yoda has caught one of my legs scrunched, and it's trapped. I've been doing Yoda, uh, where you do poses to make yourself more relaxed. Yes. So I got one of my legs stuck, and it's made me feel trapped. And emotionally. Emo- emotionally and physically, actually. My leg was stuck. It's not anymore, but my emotions have not recovered. Your emotions haven't caught up to your physical space. Exactly. You said it. Is that, is that the kind of thing that can be, be cleared out with your voodoo or whatever? No, unfortunately not. You can't clear out a, like whatever, like a leg being trapped by a a Yoda scrunchie? No, I can only get rid of things that have been consumed. I consumed something during that 70s show? You were consuming that 70s show visually. I... that is absolutely true. You know, sometimes I've taken certain sounds out of people that they've consumed through their ears, or uh, certain smells that they've consumed through their nose. I... this is aura cleansing. It's the things that you consume that trap you. So could it be that she had consumed Yoda to such an extent that it, it trapped herself inside of it? I see that your live audience is very uncomfortable. Um, they're very upset. And so I'm going to go down now into the audience. I'm going to start doing a few aura cleansings on your audience. If that's Please. all right with you, let's just cheat. Let's get this into a safe, positive zone. Yes, absolutely. And this is going to be great because a lot of our audience, if you remember, they haven't touched anyone in weeks because they've been trying to stay safe. So, I mean, just the fact that you're going to be able to hold on to them and and look them and so view deep their and medically, into their I should eyes. say, I'm not okay with this. Boo, 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 shut up. Now, Sage, go ahead. All right, I'm going to go down. I'm going to have a private experience with each of your audience members now. So if you would go ahead and speak with uh, Betty here, who once again is not my daughter. So Betty, since you've been working with Sage, which is only a few minutes because you did not know her beforehand, how has your life changed? Uh, I feel much lighter I only feel a little stuck, except when I think about it. But I do, I do think that my aura may have had some cleansing, and maybe next time I, I won't watch that '70s show uh, when mm. I do Yoda. That makes so much sense, and that 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 is a huge growth that you found here today, isn't it? Can we give Betty a hand, everyone? And I want to thank you. Uh, for everything you've done for me today because I I think this is really going to change my life.
in a great way. I think after this, we might be able to cut my meds in half. After this, what? After my aura cleansing. And what, 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 what kind of meds are you going to cut in half? Just what they give me. About 12 a day. I mean, that's a huge step going from 12 pills to 6 pills. Dr. London, even you have to admit this aura cleansing works, right? Well, I, I guess I'm confused about, for one thing, what what the pills are. I I guess during this time of isolation, what have you been going through, Betty? It started with just a little anxiety until I started doing the Yoda, and it turned into less anxiety until my leg became trapped, and I became trapped. And I came to you all for help, and I do feel a lot better, uh, as I had previously stated. So the pills you were taking were anxiety pills? Yeah, I mean, it started just two a day, and I kept doubling it. And to clarify, they were anti-anxiety pills, correct? Yes, yes, anti. I mean, they cause anti-anxiety. They cause anti-anxiety. That They... <laughs> So, cause so uh, they don't a negative a negative anxiety they cause anti-anxiety yeah that i mean that that's to go from 12 of those a day down to six but with a combination of yoda and sage's aura cleansing i mean that, that that's a huge step yeah i mean i'm mind blown i can't even i mean are you you okay. keep you did keep mentioning that you're like less trapped now and less stuck are you still a little stuck physically? I mean, I'm not going to be able to move my foot until I see a doctor. Get out! Okay, so you're still stuck right now. You did kept you kept insisting that you were no well, longer stuck, but see, now it does sound like you we have... We can see your leg over your head right now. It's just sort of hard to tell because half of her body is covered in the like blanket thingy. The weighted blanket. But you've got to be stuck. We know that you're stuck. I'm a you little can't lie about being stuck. stuck, but emotionally I'm very freed. I can feel in my bones and, and in each of my veins. That and that is huge. We have Sage to 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 to, to thank for that. Get out. Thank you. Are we ready for our next guest, Doctor London? I'm I'm ready. I I didn't schedule any of this. I'm not coordinate. Uh, but yeah, it looks like there's someone else here. Hey guys, video chatting in from my bunker. That's right. Who are we talking to today? Talk to our audience a little oh, bit. Oh, hey guys. This is Priscilla. How are you? Oh, we're doing great back here on Land Earth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in it too. Get out. Oh, but you're uh, more in it than us, huh? We're uh, we're on top of the ground here, but you sound like you're in some sort of a bunker. Is that right? Yeah, well, you know, I forgot what it's even like out there. Oh, you know, it's, uh, it's the same as always. <laughs> Isn't that right, Dr. London? No, it's it's much different from always. Um, so, Well, yeah, I mean, it's completely different than normal, than it's ever been. Yeah, but so, so you live... Priscilla, you live in a bunk. Is it all right if I call you Priscilla, first of all? Yes, that's my name. Okay. Yeah, Priscilla, why are you in this bunker? Well, you know, I started taking precautions. Uh, I have 10 years of experience living in quarantine. So, uh, I'm sorry. you know, I just did it. 10 years? You have 10, 10 years of experience living in quarantine? Yes. When, how long have you been in quarantine? Well, I mean, as of right now, it's at three years because I had to go to my cousin's wedding. I can't miss it. But before that, I was underground for seven years. Oh, right. And you couldn't miss that. I I mean, no, they're, they're my best friends. So how could I miss it? And so you've been preparing. You've been in quarantine since about 2010. Is that about right? Yes. And why? So... Yeah, what w you said in preparation for, I think generally I was going to assume it was coronavirus, but what were you preparing for in 2010? Was that like... Uh, 
Well, were you were you preparing for like Mumford and Sons or? <laughs> uh, no, actually, I it it wasn't that I'm preparing for anything. I'm just taking precautions, as of you know, what if, what if, what if? Wow, powerful words from from our guest from the bunker now i have to wonder what what is the if that you are talking about what are you what are you most worried about well i thought i should build my own house (gasps) you know in 2010 i was thinking should i build my own house well what if it burned down (gasps) should i uh you know buy some land no because they can just take it away (gasps) but if you're in the land nobody knows and no, nobody can take that away from you. Well, I, d- I don't think that's true at all. Nope. In any way. But it's interesting. Isn't that right, Dr. London? Yes. Yeah, it doesn't really add up to me that much. So, so it was for no reason that you decided to go underground except for the what if scenario of what if anything happened at all. Well, I I do understand the fear of building a house and worrying that it's going to burn down. I understand that, and so you refuse to do. I, I refuse to do most things in my day to day life out of fear that I'm going to end up burning it down, whatever the thing is. Yeah, well, you know, I bet you worry about lots of little things during the day that I don't ever think about because I don't even know. I don't even think about them anymore. See that you're you're convincing me. You're this might be the ideal life. Yeah, well, let's hope so with all of this COVID stuff. Now, Dr. London, do you think that our guest here is going to be going to be safe in her bunker um, as the medical expert of the show? I don't know the specifics of her bunker, uh, like, but assuming you've had no contact with any other people. I have TV and I mean, can y'all hear me? My connection's pretty good. I have internet too. I, I'm sorry. I meant physical contact with people like have you been within six feet of people say do you consider you consider seeing someone on tv the same as having contact with them well yeah i mean with social media you don't even need to see people in person really yeah no that is very true tv is not social media get out you are not i'm all over if the you're internet. watching an episode of if you're watching an episode of friends you are not watching people for real through social media. You're just watching an ep- I, this might just take too long to explain. Could you could you describe your bunker for us? Like what what is your bunker made out of? What what does it look like? What do you what do you what do you have for the end of times that you're you're stalking away? It's not for the end of times. It's just precautionary. Um and I mean, I don't worry about that kind of thing because I'm already prepared, so Everyone can wonder about the end times. Me, I'll be fine. Okay, so when I had asked what your bunker was made out of and what you've stowed away, you're saying that you haven't put thought into stuff like that. For 10 years, this just has not crossed your mind having stuff or even what it's made out of. It's made out of metal and okay there's a start what else would you like to know about it the layout because i have a nice bed no yeah just like what what have you taken down there in the bunker with you to you know help keep you sane what kind of foods are you storing down there oh yeah canned foods uh you can also you can hear the rabbits when they're above the cell door to my bunker so you can often trap them so you are going to the surface to to trap these animals yes why not? Okay. Yeah, how far underground is this bunker? Oh, it's just barely underground. Okay, and when you say bunker, do you mean like a locked, like you can't escape kind of fortress kind of thing? Or it, you, you sound so casual about it, I'm almost tempted to think, is it a basement by any chance? It's not a basement, London. There's no house on top. But it's not anything scary. It's just like a little house, but underneath the ground. Um, and, a, you know, a location where not many people know where it is. So what do you even know what's going on in on the surface in the real world? Like, why are you even calling in today? They call me the quarantine expert. So I'm here to lend my advice. 
Is this your doing, Doctor London? Is this the expert? That no, you this is me? you, Cameron. You are the one who. Dude, this is the expert. This is the guest. You brought me some sort of a prank. Is that what we're talking about, Doctor London? No. So, so, Cameron, whenever you arranged this, this is all you. You booked the guest. Was this in one of your? I don't want to call it like a stupor, but sometimes you get into these states where you do things especially in regard to the show that you don't remember afterwards and you contact people. Oh, my stupor state. Yeah. Your stupor state. You say it like it's a super state. Like you're proud of it. Well, of course I'm proud of it. It's my favorite state. Yeah. And I, I feel like you're in it a lot. And the problem with it is that we have guests like this who it sounds like she just slow stress in there. She in that state, she seems to just, live just casual she lives underground you just live your but she life. comes up for whatever she wants and you can see on the video the live feed we have here like it just looks like a normal basement yeah it doesn't we've been calling it a bunker i wouldn't even know if it's a basement i think it's maybe just a house that sunk a little bit is is that does that accurately describe priscilla what you're staying in i mean you two obviously aren't going to believe me. Nope. No, we're not. Well, the window there, we can see through the window behind your head that there's dirt like up halfway. Well, and there's a guy there. I painted that. He's waving at you. Oh, you painted that window? Yeah, it looks like that guy is waving, but... He's not. Oh, he is holding still, I I see. It's just my internet in here, you know, always cutting in and out. Priscilla, we've got a lot of people here today watching our show and listening to our show and in the audience right here who are very concerned about the current times and how they, too, sort of want to quarantine. Even if it's not required, some states it's required, some it's not. But even everywhere, people are wanting to kind of hole up. Do you have any advice for them? Yes. Uh... Good things to do to stay busy. You know, you could do some leg exercises. I don't have too much room in the bunker, so I like to do Yoda to stretch out a little bit. Horizontal bicycles, where you pretend you're on a bicycle while you lay on your bed. Snacks are always good. Yes. If you have a lot of time on your hands, cook them the old-fashioned way so that, um, you know, you won't be bored or... What is, what is the old-fashioned way of a snack? Yeah, I'm not following that either. Oh, <laughs> my bad. I forget how it is up there. Yeah, it's different here. We just we just have our snacks. And it's not a matter of time, necessarily, that stops us from having them or not. Well, first step, go get wood. Okay. Okay. This is the first step of the making a snack? This is the old-fashioned way of okay. making a snack. Go get wood. A snack, yeah. Audience, are you listening, audience? <laughs> Go get wood, first step. Step two, build a fire. I'm sorry, underground? Just... You have to open the door in the top. Yeah, I think it's been well established here that she she kind of just comes and goes as she pleases. The sealed aspect of the bunker is not... I don't think it's functioning properly, I never said it was sealed because I need some fresh air sometimes. I'm not a crazy person. I just live underground. Right. Yeah. That, okay. That, that is true. So what, what else? Step two, build a fire. Step three, open your can of beans. It, I suggest you get a can opener. I got one finally. I finally got one, and um, it really changed my life. I have a lot more time on my hands now. Wow. <laughs> what were you doing? What were you doing before you were spending? You were just spending a lot of time trying to open these cans of beans, or were you not even bothering? Before I, w- you know, I had a knife, and every day it was a huge struggle. Aww. Yeah, that sounds like it. Get out. That sounds awful, especially since you could have just gotten a can opener at any time because you, as we've mentioned, you'd kind of just come and go as you please. (laughs) Well, I've only been out 
for one weekend and it was just for my cousin's wedding i couldn't miss it except for all the times that you go to set rabbit traps and whatnot well that's just outside i don't have any human contact Well, and one clarification do you order things online still no my mom delivers groceries every week and jewel pods get out so your mom is delivering groceries every week but you're still insisting on eating only canned beans this is a, this is very interesting quarantine prep, but I do I do like it. I respect it. It's not prep. Remember, it's precaution. It's precautions. That's right. So, audience, I think some of the things you take away from this, take it and and, and include it in your own quarantine, is we're talking eating lots of beans, getting your mom to deliver like food and stuff whenever you need it. You can come and go as you please. It doesn't really matter. And if you want to order something, have your mom order it and she'll just bring it over when she drops off the groceries. I are the is this about right, Priscilla? That's how I've made it. For immunocompromised audience, I would say that probably take more precautions than this in terms of your approach to uh isolation. Get out! Like you you don't want to be around people a lot or go to the surface well depending on where you live that is true dr london i appreciate those tips you guys we know that uh you know not everyone here here is the healthiest individual so you, it is smart to listen to dr london but before we leave today everyone hold hands like we always do no everyone on, hold no. hands hold it tight get just get real in there every audience member touching every other audience member this is when you're glad you're in the bunker yeah it's not safe cameron for all of us to hold hands everyone holding hands sage how are we doing down there is have you have you gotten to everyone's aura get out all right i think i went through everyone everyone is now cleansed and I, was, I did a, a little bit of some breathing techniques with some of your audience members, some of your more um, vulnerable audience members, just to kind of give them a little blessing of protection by what I wow. do for the breathing treatment. I just kind of breathe deeply into their mouths and then they yes. breathe out into my mouth and I absorb some of the negative things uh, that they keep within their lungs. So this that and you is didn't use amazing. tongue for that. Did you use tongue for that? If it's a very severe and very vulnerable person, yes, I will if I need to. It's uh, just, it's, you, it's just showing respect. Well, it's like you know, giving mouth to mouth resuscitation. Uh, you know, sometimes you have to step in and just basically kiss someone to save their life and this is kind of the same type of thing yeah like sometimes you know sometimes you're at a pool or whatever and you see like a like a beautiful woman and she's drowning or whatever and you have to pull her out of the pool and then you have to put her in like an outfit that like you really like and like picked out for her and stuff like that and then like maybe you take her to dinner or something like that and then you can do like like mouth to mouth right and that's your approach to to helping heal someone is the same approach that you use for a beautiful woman who's drowning. Well, kind of like what Priscilla was talking about, it's more precautionary. You know, I know that this person that I'm dealing with, they are very immunocompromised. They are very susceptible to this. So I'm just going to go ahead and give them this breathing treatment that will help kind of build up their lungs. So I've yeah, done that with a few of your... Can you give me some of, of that your... too? Sure. Can I get some of that? <laughs> Oh, thank you. And real quick, do you want to do you want to read and maybe cleanse Priscilla's aura, Sage? How's my aura, Sage? Well, I can't get clo- I can't get close enough to you, Priscilla. Uh, I've got to really get my nose at the tip of your nose and really stare into your eyes and I can't do that from here. I'm sorry. That's just one of the negative aspects of living in a bunker, I guess. <laughs> you say negative I say positive. Okay. Well, that seems like a good place to kind of, you know, wrap things up here. Dr. London, I gotta I gotta confess something. I don't like I don't like doing this. It seemed like any time that a moment in the show popped up where it required preparation, like say knowing who the guest uh-huh. is, 
at that moment, it became my show again. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, the medical lessons, uh-huh. everything that the show's based yeah, on. Yeah, my, my, my version of the show was more of a free-for-all. It's more of just kind of like a... Kind of like a hangout sesh with like your best bros rather than like a class with a freak teacher. But I'm realizing now that we kind of need the freaky ass freak teacher to control things. Okay. Maybe maybe a cool guy like me, my position is more of a supportive yet badass, yet also antagonistic, yet also you know can i borrow like thirty five hundred dollars yeah so you're the producer of the show so that's your role it's pretty specific so all right audience guys let's get out of here get out go on Yeah, and actually so go ahead and get your masks back the ones that they try to take from you at the door you do like i know cameron is very concerned about vigilantism but you do need those masks that, to help. That, you know, I understand it. That's fine. And Sage has 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 blessed all of the masks already, so you're good on that front. Oh no, Sage, can you tell us what you did exactly with the masks? So with the masks, what I did is I wanted to put my spiritual oils all over the mask. So I have put all of the masks uh, through my armpits. That's where I gather the most oils and the most sweats. And so all the masks have now passed through my armpits and my spiritual oils are covering them. You know what's funny is that when you were getting close to me earlier, I could feel it felt like your aura had a very arm pity type of sense to it. Kind of that pungent, you know, like, oh, do they not wear deodorant? Do they not know that they wear deodorant? Do they need to switch deodorants? You know what I mean? Yeah, That's, it sounded like B.O. That, was, that, like that body kind odor. of aura was, was all around you. It was amazing. It's wonderful to have a natural musk like i do uh some people do say that it's too powerful but those people i don't really want near me exactly you know yeah. like like dr london he's used to medical things and ivs and cat scan machines and stethoscopes and i like to just you know roll around outside in the grass and i like to kind of dip in the dip in the lake every now and then and I, that's that's just the way that i live my life now 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 sage you your your voice kind of changed a little bit when you were talking about dr london and medicine and stethoscopes and ha, have you consumed anything i don't know medical lately have, did you, have you consumed the words of a doctor or something that might be clogging up your aura did you forget to consume an apple a day to keep the doctor away I could never forget because I keep an apple on my bedside table. Uh, probably what you're experiencing is it's just the spiritual irritation that I have around Dr. London. Just whatever he carries, I just can't stand to be around it. Is that something that maybe I can cast out of you or you, you, can, you can cleanse out of yourself? No, it would have to be. It's just. Be like, gone! Get out! Go! Ow, stop swatting me. Stop swatting all of us. Okay, yeah, so so like I said, probably a good time to wrap it up. Thank you to uh, Betty for being on the show. Yeah, thank you, Betty, whose life has been fixed and improved thanks to my version of the show. And who is not my daughter. And who is not Sage's daughter. Nope. Thank you to Priscilla, who took the time to uh, talk to us live from her bunker. Priscilla, who who taught all of our audience and all of our friends and listeners the the importance of not preparing, but... Taking precautions. But taking precautions. One can of beans delivered weekly at a time. (laughs) Along with... Yeah, the rest of the groceries. Yeah, like the other beans and then whatever packages and other, like probably video games or whatever, or DVDs. Jewel pods. Yeah, jewel pods. It, 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 again, it, it, you can kind of just get anything delivered. Well, and thank you to our producer, Cameron. And thank you to Digital in the House. I don't want to call it like a stupor, but sometimes you get into these states. Oh, my stupor states.
yeah, your stupor state. You say it like it's a super state, like you're proud of it. Oh, my stupor state. Get out! Get out! Get out! Get out! And thank you to um, Sage Daniels as well for being back on. And uh, this has been... Dr. London, i got to be Uh, honest, I'm pretty excited to announce my retirement as the host of the Jock Doc Show. Oh, you're admitting that you're... Okay. I I am retiring. My name is... I am officially handing the responsibilities back to you. But I am keeping my raise. Your, well, we'll talk. Obviously, about, I got okay. a raise going from a producer to the host, so but I'm going to hold on to that part of it. Uh, my name is Dr. Lennon Smith. Dot com. This has been the Jock Doc Podcast. See ya. Get out. Get out.